Today's uh, sermon is going to be a little bit more pedantic than normal, so I'm not going to start out with your typical introduction. Uh, so I'm going to present to you uh, my outline, uh, which is going to be a little bit different than normal. Um, I like outlines, uh, but this one's going to be a not so much preaching-oriented kind of outline because uh, Romans 9 through 11 is, a, is, a, is a totally different than the rest of the book. So I need to kind of lay the foundation for studying Romans 9 through 11. Uh, and so it's be a little bit more teaching-oriented today than, than normal. So what I'm going to do is first look at what I would call is the placement of this particular section of, of literature. So Romans 9 through 11, uh, the, the theme of the book changes at this point, as it were. Uh, and uh, Paul's going to uh, entertain some questions here from Jews within the, inside the Roman church. And so if you're a Gentile right now, how many Gentiles are here? Yeah, there's a few, a few of them. Uh, if you're a Gentile today, don't, don't, don't think, this is totally not for me, why am I here? Uh, it's the word of God, all of it is inspired, it's all profitable for instruction, etc. Uh, and, and you can learn much from what Paul's going to say to his Jewish brethren in this passage. Uh, but we want to look first at the placement of this, of this particular section uh, in light of the kinds of theological questions Paul's going to an, uh, ask and answer here. Uh, and what I'd like to do is begin first by uh, saying, what do you do when you have a troublesome, complex theological question? Who do you call? What do you do? Marty. You call Marty. Or 1-800-MARTY. Yeah, uh, you call me. At least the front row calls Marty. Uh, I get lots of emails during the week, people, because we, we, we lose 20% of our membership every year because the government or the military moves them, and so we end up with parishioners all over the place, uh, and they, they continually send me questions, uh, and, and, uh, and so it keeps me busy, uh, and, uh, but I wouldn't say that would be the first thing to do. Here, here's, what I, here's some pastoral advice, and the reason why I'm giving you this advice is because Paul's going to entertain questions from the, from the church in Rome. Uh, of a theological nature. And so uh, we'll, we'll get at those kind of questions in just a minute. But I want to first preface that by saying, when you have a theological question, what do you do? So here, here would be my advice for you. If you're taking notes, now's the time to commence writing. Number one, pray for God to give you illumination. Long before you would talk to me, pray for God to give you illumination. Why? Because as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit and he's with you. He's there to teach you. I talk to him quite a bit. Uh, and so you need to talk to the Spirit of God and say, what do you, I don't understand this. This seems incongruous with what I read over here. Could you help me connect the dots? I don't mean, this is kind of cryptic. What does this mean, etc.? cetera? Uh, you should be talking to him for illumination. And trust me, after talking to God about the scriptures since I was nine, uh, it's amazing when the lights come on and he connects the dots because he speaks in a profound way. Number two, the first one is what? Pray for illumination. Two, uh, read your Bible. Uh-huh. Yeah, you have one? You have a Bible? Yeah, you should read it. What happens when you read it? Wow, I never knew that was in here. That happens to me. It's like, I didn't know that was in here. Uh, when you read your Bible, all, all of a sudden, you run into things, stories from the Old Testament, something in the Psalter, or something, where God will take the question that you have, and he will answer it for you as you read your Bible. You'll have one of those moments where you kind of smile, and you'll, Marty said this was going to happen. That's exactly what happens. So read your Bible. First one is? Pray. Two, read your Bible. Three, read a systematic theology. But there's another question before that. What is a systematic theology? How many haven't a clue as to what is a system? So what? You don't have no idea what I just said. How many? Don't be afraid to say. I have no idea. Okay, great, great. Um, so a systematic theology means a theology that's systematic. Thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, no. Systematic theology. Okay, so this is a DC culture. We love systems, do we not? That's how this place operates, right? So systematic theology. So take all the great doctrines of the Bible. The doctrine of sin, the doctrine of man, uh, the doctrine of Jesus, the doctrine of salvation, the doctrine of end times, the doctrine of the church. Pick a, pick a doctrine. Uh, what the systematic theology does is it takes all the Bible verses that relate to those concepts and it systematizes them. Angelology. I'm going to study angels, elect and evil. So if I don't look at demons and how they're stratified in rank and what they do and their methodologies and their strategy, I will read a systematic theology to then see how the devil operate. Well, it summarizes the entire Bible's notion of the devil that way. And it will also look at elect angels, what they do. So a systematic theology organizes all the Bibles in one place under one heading. That's awesome. Uh, I read systematic theologies all the time, always have because they teach you 
Uh, like if you have questions about the existence of God, it will go through the teleological, the cosmological, the moral arguments. It goes through all of those things in one place. That's awesome. Do you own one? Okay, so uh, not that I work for these people, but Dr. Charles Riby uh, was the head of systematic theology at Dallas Seminary, uh, where I attended. Uh, he has a really good one. Uh, it's great for lay people. It's not, I wouldn't say it's short. Most of them aren't. Uh, but it, some of them are more meaty than others. Uh, this is a really good one. It's kind of middle of the road. It's called Basic Theology. Basic Theology. That's a great one to read. It's a great one to own. Um, now, if you are from the Reformed position, like say you're a five-point Calvinist, and I can't, I can't get into what all that means, but if that's you, how many would say that's me? Confession. You don't know what that means. Okay, great. Don't worry about it, okay? But, but if that's the you, uh, you would want to read Wayne Grudem's Bible Doctrine. I got a copy. I've been reading it. I'm not a Calvinist, to a five-pointer, but I do read the opposing viewpoints, uh, and it stretches your mind and your thinking and et cetera. So that's another great one to own. So I had a husband and wife in the last service. Uh, he's Reformed. She's not Reformed. She's buying both those systematic theologies so they can both get their needs met. Nice. Marriage enrichment. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, next, read books on the subject, whatever your subject is. So if you're re studying uh, the concept of war in the Old Testament, uh, because God did call for holy war, it's called hachreim in the Old Testament, uh, God was a warrior God. Yeah. Judgment. Judgment. It's like, why did he do that? Uh, there's a really good book on that subject uh, by uh, Paul Copan, uh, C-O-P-A-N, called Is God a Moral Monster? That's an excellent book. Because when I was uh, starting PhD studies in Hebrew uh, back in 85, uh, um, I had to write a 60-page paper on the concept of holy war in the Old Testament. This is a great book to help you think through that, especially if you're in the military. Uh, talk with other Christians who might be more knowledgeable than you uh, and pick their brain. That's a great thing to do. And if uh, somebody comes to, to, uh, to me and asks me Bible questions, I usually give them books to read or I give them uh, articles to read. If you have a question, I give you articles to read. What should you do? Read them. One lady came to me with a complex issue, theological of nature. I gave her six periodical articles to read. She went away for a couple of weeks, came back in my office, had an appointment, everything, sat down and said, I am still so troubled with that issue. What's my question? Did you read the, article? Did you read the articles? Her answer? No. No, I didn't.